Well, hey everybody, Dylan here, and welcome to kind of sort of blast from the past, even though it's, I think, where we left off, December 22nd, 2023 Smackdown review. It's been a while since I posted a Smackdown review, so I figured, eh, let's relatively keep it on the same schedule. Ready? Oh, rah, rah, rah. Oh, also, a uh, friendly reminder, I won't review the episode uh, for the 29th due to just being a recap, same thing that I did with Raw, so I think this should put me right about on, um, right where I should be on SmackDown now. Anyway, it starts off with a recap of the previous SmackDown, which, no spoilers, because I'm going to review that eventually, have I mentioned that enough at the opening? <laughs> then we go into this holiday-themed episode of SmackDown. Starts out with AJ Styles coming out, and he says he doesn't blame Orton or Knight for wanting to beat up Reigns, but AJ wants him at the Rumble. LA Knight then comes out and says that AJ can have his rematch after LA Knight gets his match with Reigns. Yeah. He then says Styles and him have unfinished business after last week. Styles says that he was supposed to go to Crown Jewel and beat a tag team match with Cena, but Knight stepped over his dead body and took that spot. Then Orton comes out and says he understands why they have beef with Reigns, but Orton has been out due to 18, uh, has been out for 18 months because of Reigns, which means he gets first dibs. Then Knight cuts him off by saying that nobody has taken him out, which makes him bulletproof, and he wants first dibs. Nick Aldis comes out and says they all have legitimate claims against Reigns, so he's given them all a shot. Um, if they can win the triple threat against one another next week for the number one contendership. I said that very complicated. Sorry, in two weeks, because next week would have been the um, re recap Christmas episode, whatever. You get what I'm saying. In two weeks, where the winner gets reigns at the pay-per-view. AJ says, fine, but if anyone gets close to the ring his match later on tonight against Solo, he will take them out. Four stars for that. That was a good way to open up the show. We then go to commentary, which at that time was a three-man booth of Corey Graves, Michael Cole, and Kevin Patrick. They run down the card for the night. After that, Team Bianca, consisting of her, Zelina Vega, Shotzi, and Mitchin, comes out on Shotzi's tank and they're going against Damage Control, where Team Bianca wins when Minshin puts Kari Sain through a table for the win. Three and a half stars. The team that won should have been Damage Control, but I'm also biased there, to be fair. Then we get a recap of the Bloodline taking out AJ, and we go backstage to where Jimmy is trying to hype up Solo, but, Jimmy, uh, but Solo is playing it straight. Then we pan to Roman, where Heyman tries to brief him on Nick Aldis, but Reigns demands for Paul to bring Nick to him. Then we get a match for the North American Championship between Dragon Lee and Butch. This is before he was Pete Dunne again, so I'm going to keep the story consistent. <laughs> uh, they show how Dragon Lee won his title on NXT Deadline, I think from Dominic Mysterio, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Dragon Lee ends up winning this match after a brutal back and forth with, uh, I think he calls it Operation Dragon, to retain three and a half stars. After that, they have another highlight of the night. Uh, this one was for the U.S. Tournament Round 1. I think we're in Round 2 right now between Kevin Owens and Carmelo Hayes. During that time, they go to a backstage where Roman talks to Nick Aldis alone he tells Paul to leave, and Paul does. He asks Nick, how does he know that he's not talking to him when he says, like, leave us. He's like, how do you know I wasn't talking to you? And Nick says, with all due respect, he doesn't care if he was. Roman asks him if he booked the triple threat match in Solo versus AJ. Nick says he did. Reigns said those were good ideas. A better one would have been if he ran it by Reigns first. He tries to intimidate Aldis basically throughout this whole thing. Nick tells him that he runs this place and that Solo did better at taking out Cena than Reigns did. He said he's so looking forward to Solo and the triple threat and all the matches and he's looking forward to more productive conversations. He leaves as Reigns gets pissed and does his like <laughs> face, you know what I mean? And I love how Nick Aldis is not taking shit. Please keep this coming. 
The match ends, by the way, there was a match, when Kevin Owens hits a swanton and a stunner to win, to advance as Kevin shakes Carmelo's hand. Three and a half stars, a great showcase for Carmelo, in my opinion. We then go backstage to where the OC comes up. Uh, Mission hugs Styles and tells him it's good to have him back. Anderson asks him if they're good, and AJ takes Mission's hands off, kind of like pries them off, and says, I don't know, are we good? <laughs> uh, three three stars. The Good Brothers didn't do anything to prevent him from getting injured. I get it, but, like, come on. Come on. You can't break up the OC. Then the Hurt Prophets come out as Lashley's coming for. Then the Hurt Prophets come out as Lashley is coming out for good tournament match. Oh, he has a good tournament match. I can't read my own notes. Sorry, against uh, Santos Escobar, where the match ends with two fans, quote unquote fans, trying to distract Lashley. Uh, they also take out the Hurt Prophets, and Escobar rolls up Lashley to win. After the match is over, the masked fans go to. Uh, go up the ramp with Santos Escobar, and they unmask to be Angel and Umberto re- re-debuting on the main roster. They're now his henchmen. I think their name is technically like the family, but I will never call them La Familia because that is already a group. <coughs> Three and a half stars. We then go backstage where Butch is interviewed and congratulates Dragon Lee on his win until Pretty Deadly interrupts him, making fun of him. He attacks them both until they are until they're broken up, basically. And Nick Aldis tells Butch, "We don't do this backstage here. If he wants, he can find himself a tag team partner and have a match in two weeks." I just saw the shadow of my cat like messing with the fan blade. So if you hear that, you're welcome. Anyway, when we come back from commercial, Logan Paul makes a pro- does a promo video saying that he's better than both of his so-called challengers whoever wins the semifinal next week and whoever he goes against he will win against why do I have to listen to a Paul brother commentary then runs down the card for two weeks out then we have the main event of Styles versus Solo it ends with Roman jumping Styles in the ring causing a DQ win for Solo they have a brawl where Roman gets the best of AJ until Styles gets the best of Reigns basically then Solo takes out AJ like always Orton comes out to help, but then Jimmy Uso comes out and tries to beat him down, but then the megastar L.A. Knight, yeah, makes it to the ring to give some jabs. All the bloodline gets sent to the outside, and A.J. says he didn't need either one of their helps and starts swinging at Orton and Knight, and basically it's the people who are in the three-way uh, triple threat start fighting against each other, Solo and Jimmy were about to go to the ring, but Reigns holds them both back and says, no, let them do this. Uh, they keep all keep on brawling uh, as we see like Roman just smiling about it, and that's how we end the show. I think somebody better call it Guinness, because this is the shortest review I have done in quite some time. Uh, to that segment, I will give it four stars, because there is not a bad Bloodline segment in my mind. I love the Bloodline. Also, overall for the show, I'll be nice and give it four stars. It was lingering on a three and a half stars, but friendly reminder, my reviews don't mean anything. All right, you all take care. I just saw that there's another episode of SmackDown that was, like, newer than this, but whatever. It's an old episode review. There's no chronological timeline. I'll see you either later on today for week three or tomorrow for uh, SmackDown, so... Bye!